protests against the bombardment of Gaza have been taking place in cities across the U.S. Uh, these are scenes from Washington, D.C. Crowds have also gathered in Boston, Dallas and Los Angeles. Earlier, U.S. President Joe Biden spoke about the conflict to both Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. Well, yes, President, as we well, and then we think we've got John Hendren standing by for us on that. And uh, tell us more about what we know about these calls. Well, to Abbas, the president expressed sympathy at the loss of life of Palestinians. He expressed concern about the number of children who had been killed in these confrontations. And he said, ultimately, a two-state solution is required in order to resolve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict uh, over time. That has long been the U.S. position. But to Netanyahu, he added a couple of different points. Uh, to both leaders, he expressed concern and demanded the stop of Hamas rockets coming out of Gaza. Uh, to Netanyahu, the president said that Israel had the right to defend itself um, and expressed a, a condemnation of Hamas and the rockets that they had sent. Of course, the president is not talking to Hamas. That's because the United States does not recognize Hamas as the leaders of Gaza. And of course, in Gaza, they're not recognizing the Palestinian Authority as their leader. So some of these messages tend to get lost. Uh, but the president uh, offered his second call to Netanyahu. This was his first call to Mahmoud Abbas, which was, of course, a sign of respect. And there had been some concern that at that level, the, the president had not made that contact previously. Anthony Blinken, the secretary of state, had done so. And of course, the U.S. defense secretary and the British minister of, or, I'm sorry, the uh, Israeli minister of defense uh, also had a conversation as well. So while these talks are all ongoing, um, the concern among many people in the streets the U.S. and elsewhere is that there's not enough pressure on the, from the United States on Israel to stop this conflict. And on, on that, I mean, how common is it to see solidarity protests for Palestinians taking place across the U.S.? Well, they've happened from time to time, but this is extraordinary because you have a, a much larger um, Muslim population in the U.S. You've got uh, population centers here uh, as well as uh, in Miami. Detroit has another huge population center. And I think there's increasing sympathy for the Palestinian cause when you consider that there are now members of Congress. Rashida Tlaib uh, is the first Palestinian uh, mem American member of Congress. Um, you also uh, have... Uh, Ilhan Omar, another Muslim American of Somali extraction, um, representing um, you know many uh, many other constituents. So what you end up having is a much larger crowd here, much more attention, and then. 20 years ago, there would have been two parties largely here in the U.S., but really one policy toward the Israeli-Palestinian conflict from the U.S. government. Now you're hearing uh, dissenting voices speaking out on the floor of Congress. And of course, now we've got thousands of people marching in the street here, heading to the Capitol right now, expressing their concern that, in their opinion, the U.S. is not doing enough to pressure Israel on this conflict. John Hendren, thank you very much indeed. People around the world have been rallying against Israel's bombardment of Gaza. This was a scene in Baghdad earlier. Demonstrators gathered in Tahrir Square to show support for Palestinians in Gaza. Some in the crowds were seen burning Israeli flags. Demonstrators also gathered for solidarity protests in the Qatari capital, Doha. Hundreds of protesters waved Palestinian flags at the Grand Mosque in the centre of the city. And hundreds gathered in Tunisia's capital despite a coronavirus lockdown that was imposed recently. They're calling on Arab countries to reject normalising ties with Israel after four did so last year. In Paris, police used tear gas and water cannon against demonstrators who defied a protest ban to rally in support of Palestinians. The city's police chief deployed more than 4,000 officers on the streets and closed shops where the march was meant to start. The court had banned the protest over fears of violence. Demonstrations were allowed to go ahead in other cities, including Lille and Marseille. Thousands of protesters also took to the streets in London. Al Jazeera's Paul Brennan was there. 
The organisers of this march in London had hoped for between 10 and 20,000 participants, and it looks very much as though they've achieved that goal. And this is one of more than 30 marches taking place up and down the UK today, Saturday. The point of this is anger and solidarity. Anger about the pictures that people have been seeing on their television screens for the past two weeks, both as the tension ramped up in occupied East Jerusalem, but also as the conflict has erupted on the, on the Gaza border. Now, what are they asking for? What are they demanding? Well, they're demanding action from the UK government, that the UK government no longer deals trade and arms with Israel. They're, and they're essentially saying that everybody should take notice to exactly what is happening in Israel. They're very pragmatic, the people here, and I've got to say it's a cross-section of population from very young to very old. They know that one march alone is not going to solve the Middle East conflict. But they say they can't, they can't simply do nothing. They have to express their solidarity with those people dying in Gaza and in the West Bank. There's lots more still to come this hour.